Hello again. Uh, before to continue with our conference, uh, I want to explain that the certification will be sent by uh, mail in the next two weeks, used to certify, to certify the accreditation for nurses and physicians. Uh, then you can be totally calm that you will receive the mail with the certification. Eh, en español, les comento que el certificado va a ser enviado en el transcurso de las siguientes dos semanas eh, porque queremos garantizar la acreditación tanto para enfermeras como para médicos. Gracias. Y uh, ahora continuamos con la siguiente conferencia. La siguiente conferencia eh, es por Nashla Duque Monroy. Yo. <ríe> uh, Um, I am pediatrician and neonatologist in the Curaçao Medical Center, Curaçao. And today I want to tell you uh, in Curaçao Medical Center, what is our NICU, what is our team, and how Epic Latino is involved in our lives. This is our NICU. We are the referral center for the Caribbean. We are receiving our local population and all the Caribbean referral patients and we treat premature babies with all additional comorbidities. And when we have uh, complexities of four level, we are sending this patient to Colombia or Netherlands. I try to explain you what are all the people that is involved in the work in our NICU. We have nine NICU beds, two isolation NICU boxes that sometimes we use for pediatric intensive care patients too. And now that I have in the public people from the adult intensive care, Sometimes we manage pediatric intensive patients in adult intensive care with the support of the beautiful ladies that we have here and that we have today here and with the intensivists. We have four high care beds that are really close to be open in the moment that we can get the enough personnel to do it. And we have eight medium care beds available too. We have a multidisciplinary team with NICU and pediatric nurses, because they are the vital part of our team, uh, two neonatologists, general pediatricians, pediatric cardiologists, pediatric nephrologists, pediatric endocrinologists, pediatric ophthalmologists, uh, surgery with pediatric expertise, and pediatric residents from Belgium and Netherlands that are with us during six months or one year, depending. That is our team. You can see that is a lot of specialties, but really we reduce the number to uh, seven persons that you will know, but everyone is working together to do all the tasks that we need to do. We are receiving our local population and all the Caribbean referred patients in a third level of complexity. And we treat premature babies with all additional comorbidities. I repeat again, because it's important to mention what is the dimension of this NICU and why it's relevant to improve quality care. Additionally to this, we want to be, and we are now a family center care in support with Ronald McDonald's House of Charity. And we are trying to offer parent support because parents are part of our work too. We are uh, in the goal for GCI accreditation. We continue in our process of education training for nurses and doctors. And the more important task that we want to do is the quality care improvement. And in that setting, when we are talking about quality care improvement, Epic Latino is in our lives. Uh, when I was working in Colombia, uh, more of four years ago, because now I am here in September, four years working here in Curaçao, uh, I did part of the Epic Latino group because I was working with one of the um, board of the one person of the Epic Latino board that additionally is my mentor that is today here, Dr. Angela Hoyos. And the important thing that we need to mention about the Pig Latino is that this a neonatal network for quality improvement in NICUs for Latin America and the Caribbean. And Curaçao is part of this group since 2019. Uh, the pediatric team took advantage that we were really starting in the Curaçao Medical Center in November 2019. And in that moment, we start with the statistics to really start with zero in Curaçao Medical Center. I want to show you the conference, the diverse conference of Epic Latino, 
that uh, has been in Bogota and Quito. Uh, the last one was in Mexico, but by the pandemic situation was by Zoom. And I am showing you all the board of Epic Latino that is here with us too. And it's important to mention that in this database, we always have in account the number of admissions, the number of deaths, the number of patients that are receiving surfactant, number of patients receiving oxygen, the average SNAP scores, rate of first episode of confirmed nosocomial infection, rate of initial and subsequent confirmed infection, nosocomial infection, total positive cultures, day 28 and week 36 dates, and bronchopulmonary dysplasia. This is part of the information that we are recollecting, but the idea is with all that information, we really manage quality indicators that can really help every NICU with the report of this. What do you need to improve to guarantee quality care? Uh, in our case, we really start with the infection prevention process, and we were really taking in account the quality indicators in our information with rate of first episode of nosocomial infection and rate of initial and subsequent epi episode confirmed of nosocomial infection and the total positive cultures. It's important to mention that after the first report in 2019, we really start to implement strategies to improve the database and the reports and the results that we were funding. And that is really the goal of the EPIC Latino group. The PIG Latino group is the support to improve quality care. And that is one of the reasons that we have the PIG Latino, the seven conference this week here in Curaçao, because we are part of the group and now Curaçao is involved in work for quality care. For this, for, the, for every year, PIG Latino is making a report and is based on data collected during 2021 for 30 neonatal intensive care units in Latin America and the Caribbean. What are the NICU participants? All participant units have intensive and intermediate, and intermediate care beds, and all except one have basic care beds. All SF1 receives some time referrals from another institutions, and all participant institutions have a delivery room. So the idea is, hmm? no, all no, just one, doesn't have. The goals of EPIC Latino Neonatal Network are to establish and maintain a data source for Latin American Caribbean neighbor units. It's important to have information of our nucleus to really know what do we need to do to improve to provide the infrastructure to facilitate knowledge on morbidity and mortality and care of newborns in Latin America and the Caribbean, to facilitate obtaining reliable data that produce information and translate it into actions that allow the improvement on neonatal and perinatal health at the local and regional levels. So it's impossible that you cannot support and improve if you have your own information. And if you really can compare with similar NICUs that are working in the same setting and maybe have advantage respect to our NICU, we can use that support and that information to improve our quality. That is one of the goals. To establish a Latin American and Caribbean network of research interest in neonatal and perinatal care. That is the idea. If we work together, we can do amazing things together and to develop innovative research methods that improve the quality of neonatal and perinatal healthcare and attention in Latin America and the Caribbean. And important to mention that that is the reason of the PIC Latino Conference too, that we really are knowing all the amazing things that we can do. What is the background? Because it's important and I want to show you what do we do when we are recollecting the information, is that we are working with the PIC. What is EPIC? EPIC is evidence-based practice quality improvement. That is really the work and the setting that we are doing. This program allows exploring new methodology, met, met, methodologies to identify care practice, associate with good or poor outcomes, and provide a way to improve the quality of evidence-based care. How works the information system? We have a computer or we have a safe um, where um, network 
part in some of our computers that can be in the NICU, and we recollect in that all the information of our patients. And that information is sent to the database that is in Canada and recollect all the information. But it's important to mention that before that they storage all the information, they remove all the private information of the patients. So we are really always protecting our identities. The patients included in 2021 were admitted to the Pig Latino Network since January 1, 2021, until December 31, 2021. But it's important that the information is really storage until March of 2022 to give time to all the patients that were including in the database that we really know if they were really the shards on how was uh, developed the treatment. The total of patients for this previous report of 2021 was 3,895 admissions, including 54 records. We have really a lot of information, a lot of clinical histories and records. We can have more reliable information. The information system, and in this moment I want to include, because I want to invite you and invite all the NICUs that want to be part of this group, you will find the mail of Calidad, epiclatino, gmail.com, and the mail of Carlos Fajardo, neo, gmail.com, that is the Epic Latino president. If you want to know more information on how to introduce your NICU and to be part of this group. Again, I mentioned you will have the local research with the secure data source to really recollect all the information. And we have the coordinating center that is in Canada. We store in a personal computer located in the server and the copy is maintained and secured by Mount Sinai Hospital, mm -hmm. IT and technological department to have to review all the information. In the reports, I want to show you part of the report of the 2021. Uh, the information of the patients below 32 weeks of gestational age with a specific units is the first evaluation that you do to really know how many patients did you have for every unit that did part of this study. And after to recollect all that information, you start to interpret all the things that you really need to analyze to know exactly what is happening in our NICUs. For example, we really show the late onset sepsis infections per 1,000 patient days in infants below 32 weeks of gestational age. And you really see that sometimes you really have some NICUs that have problems, but that is the idea. If we have problems like a team, we support us to improve. The reports are really based in survival and mortality Late onset sepsis for 100 patients a day, positive blood cultures, enterocolitis, neuroimaging, retinopathy, supplemental oxygen at 36 weeks, prenatal and postnatal steroids, weight C score, and conditions and discharge destination. All this information can be used to improve always because the goal is quality care. Support and emission duration is part of the analysis too because that really can give you the strategy to do the best that you can do. It's important to mention that if you have in account how many patients do you have with invasive mechanical ventilation, no invasive ventilation, days with central line, transfusion, days of antibiotics, therapeutic hypothermia, and you are based in the evidence, you really can improve and you can get your goals to try to decrease the things that maybe are affecting the quality care in your NICU. In conclusions, it's important to mention that when you are being part of the Pig Latino group, the data and the difference found from our new, this, our, our new uh, units can be used, sorry, to establish change in management that will substantially improve the quality of care of newborns. Research can be carried out to analyze different risk factors and their outcomes and can be also be used by the community as a form of comparison to establish management. In Spanish and after in English. No se trata de ser mejor que otra persona. Se trata de ser mejor de lo que tú eras el día anterior. It's not about being better than another person. 
is about being better than you were the day before. I want to introduce the pediatric team of Curacao Medical Center. We are open to help of our population. And I really want to give you thank you and Masha Danki to be the day of today with us. And always remember Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Masha Danki. Now, I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Natalie Sherpark, the mother of kangaroo program in the world that we have the privilege to have today with us. Welcome, Dr. Sherpark. Okay, so thank you very much for this uh, uh, invitation. Uh, you must be tolerant with my English, please. Uh, you asked me kangaroo mother care, so it's so general, I didn't know what uh, to choose. So I decided to, to present you and to show you that kangaroo mother care is a complex intervention. And I will show you some long-term impact of kangaroo mother care. I don't have any conflict. This photo is, uh, I mean, uh, I always show this photo is Dr. Edgar Ray Sanabria. He's the one who created uh, kangaroo mother care in 1978 in Colombia. And uh, you have the photo uh, of uh, Dr. Martinez and Navarrete, his colleagues, uh, who joined him and further developed kangaroo mother care. Here you have the kangaroo foundation. The kangaroo foundation is a research group uh, uh, exclusively on uh, kangaroo mother care. Uh, and you have a photo here of the epidemiologist who worked with us and now teach in uh, FIU in Miami. Uh, you have the photo of Dr. Sita Figueroa, who died more than 10 years ago and participated to this adventure. So we create the group doing a very big randomized control trial. We wanted to see the security and the efficacy of kangaroo mother care, because be before it was really empirical, if I can say. So now there is a lot of material and guidelines uh, done, by, uh, done, or, or, uh, done by the Kangaroo Foundation, or the Kangaroo Foundation collaborated uh, with this uh, material. Uh, in the home web page of the Kangaroo Foundation, you can download all the material for free. There is a training portal and there is a nice uh, clinical practice, practical guidelines that we updated. Uh, we updated and we uploaded it uh, one year ago. We apply the methodology of GRADE uh, for questions. Uh, on uh, kangaroo mother care method and uh, kangaroo position. We were not able to complete it on kangaroo nutrition and early discharge, but I hope if you are interested, uh, I hope you will enjoy it. It was a very big work to do that. And you have, of course, in English, and in Spanish, the guidelines of the Health Ministry of Health, they were updated in 2017. Uh, you, have, uh, you have in Colombia a law uh, that was published in 2018 on the road perinata, materno perinatal roadmap. And uh, there is, uh, 
it is written that you must have a kangaroo mother care program uh, to follow all the low birth weight infant and all the premature infant. But the mortality uh, for exclusively for the premature infant or low birth weight infant from the health ministry up to 2018 in Colombia. Uh, I could not find it for Curaçao, and I tried to find it, but I was not able. I found only the uh, infantile mortality, 13.8 uh, per thousand. Uh, in Colombia, it's 7. Point, it's 7.7 uh, 7. 7, uh, for 1,000. But uh, neonatal mortality, I was not able. Somebody know how is the neonatal mortality for premature infant? No, it's difficult. So what is the kangaroo mother care method? Kangaroo position? No, it's not only the position, the kangaroo position. It is the kangaroo position, the kangaroo nutrition, the early discharge at home in kangaroo position with a close follow-up. And this component, the last one, is one of the most difficult components. Yes, once your baby is regulating temperature here and the mother is able to feed this baby, we send them at home and we follow them. Target population, all preterm infant and all low birth weight infant. Everybody's interested in the 25, 26, but there is not so many of these baby. There is a lot of 32, 33, 34, up to 37, they are premature infant. And it's not normal to be born less than 2.5 either. So all these infant are high risk uh, let's say high risk infant, so they must uh, have a special follow up. And you have a step in the hospital and a step, ambulatory step. Where are you going to initiate kangaroo mother care? In the delivery room, in NICU, in intermediary care, in, in the, the obstetric ward? So I cannot speak about each of them because it will be too much. I will just tell you something. Uh, WHO decided to update uh, their guidelines on kangaroo mother care. And the Bill and Melida Gates Foundation gave a lot of money. And they did a study. They support a study in developing country, in Nordic country. I mean, they have one percent in um, mortality in premature infant. I mean, we would be all happy to have the same mortalities in Sweden or Norway. Yes, and so they began to do a randomized control trial with infant between 28 and 32, immediately kangaroo mother care, immediately after birth. Only the baby who cannot breathe alone after one hour of uh, resuscitation, will not go in kangaroo mother care. And they randomized this study. It is an epistos study, and we will have the result of this study uh, in November 2022. So WHO support also eight, uh, a study in eight countries with immediate kangaroo mother care. And after, uh, they have all the results, and uh, I saw a lot of publication on uh, this study. It was in a low and middle income country. So they decided that immediate kangaroo mother care must be the rule. And that you must use kangaroo mother care not after stability, but for stability. So that's very different. I mean, it's a change of chip no, for everybody. And not only that, that means uh, that you have to change all the neonatal unit. You have a new, new unit. So can you imagine to put a little bed uh, near each incubator? Yeah, I saw some unit who change. Uh, I know that Spain has the money the 12th of October to change all the 
reference unit for all Spain of uh, maybe less than 1.5, only with individual uh, rooms. And I saw in British Columbia too, 100 individual rooms. Yeah, uh, the unit, but I mean, it's going to be a, a cost, a very high cost. Yes, so I think that a lot of things have to be discussed and the International Congo Mother Care Meeting, which is in November in Madrid this year, we are going to discuss the minimal stability, how to put the CPAP on the skin of the mother and uh, this kind of topic because uh, we know and WHO is going to present the new rules uh, in this Congress. So here we are not so rich that in a San Ignacio teaching hospital. So mother will come and mother will carry. You know, I would prefer to see in your photo what you need to put family-centered care is a chair with a mother or a father near each of the incubator. Yeah. So here they will stay and they will try to stay up to 10 hours. And when the baby is growing well, the mother is trained to breastfeed or to feed, uh, not obligatory, exclusively breastfeed, to feed her baby, she will go home with the baby. So the goal of the mother is to go home with her, her baby in kangaroo position. You know, it is a routine and the chair are not very comfortable, but between the mother, the father, the grandmother, they will stay uh, eight to 10 hours. That's more comfortable. That's in Uppsala, uh, in Sweden. And it was the first day of life of this baby of 33 weeks. I insist that you cannot do kangaroo if you don't have a lycra band or, or, or a support, a comfortable support for to carry this baby. I mean, like this, after one hour, you just stop. I mean, it's impossible. So you see in, in Vietnam, in Africa, they develop a, a, a lot of, uh, but the Likra band is really the best because the mother is independent. Look at this father on the left. I mean, he just want to sleep, but he cannot sleep because he doesn't have any support and the baby could fall. On the right, it's more comfortable. So the nutrition, nutrition is based on breastfeeding, but breastfeeding alone, it's not all the time, of course, uh, 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 possible, no? What we show, we did a systematic review and a meta-analysis, and we show that when the baby is more than eight hours in kangaroo mother care, it will grow better, but not only in weight, in height, and in the head, head circumference. We are using this curve. I mean, it's a pleasure. It's a phantom curve, and after you have uh, the WHO curves. Yes, and we, we put them together at 40 weeks. So it allows us to have a general view of how the baby is growing. So I will say that it's more difficult, much more difficult to breastfeed the premature infant than to put a baby in on the chest in kangaroo position. Uh, to have successful breastfeeding uh, uh, at, uh, at the discharge of intensive care unit, it's not easy. Milk ex extraction, when the mother is ca carry the baby in kangaroo position, she has more milk. I mean, it's published. It's better than in a room, uh, uh, in the little room uh, alone uh, uh, doing the extraction. We teach them non-nutritive sucking, how to jam for, from uh, nasooro gastric tube uh, to direct feeding. We don't have nearly, I mean, uh, we nearly don't have baby with tube at 34 weeks. Yeah, because we really train the family and train the mother how to stimulate the baby and to have direct breastfeeding and eventually to give supplements, but not tube, so she can go home when the baby is in kangaroo position. We don't need to wait for the baby to regulate temperature. We teach how to feed the twins. 
I go ahead. So kangaroo at home, the mother will, kangaroo at home, the mother will carry the baby 24 hours with the help of the family. Yes, of the father, of other people can replace her. And we never, we never take the baby outside the position. Why? Because the baby is asking to go out of the position. Look at that. This curve, there is 26,000 babies in these curves. Look, it will ask to go out at 38 weeks of gestational age and at 2.5. Look at this baby on the right. Yes, it will push the mother. It will try to go out alone because he's not comfortable in kangaroo position. He's sweating. He will cry each time his mother will... Uh, uh, I'll put him another time here. Why? Because he's regulating temperature. He needs to move and to be free. And after we will do two monitoring, uh, early monitoring, we will see the baby each day. We will, and when he's growing 15 grams per kg per day, we will see him each week up to term. Term, 40 weeks is very important for us. So we will do some, we will give him vitamins more than anything, and we will do screening for ROP, for audiology and neurological screening at 40 weeks. And we do a late follow-up, high-risk follow-up from 40 weeks to 12 months of, uh, 12 months of COVID age with looking for the grow, psychomotor development, neuromotor development, and refraction problem. So breastfeeding at home, I have photo at home. You can see that the, the family will work a lot for a few weeks. Everybody say it's too much work. No, they are agree to do that. They agree. Yes, they are feeling better. There is not a postpartum depression. They don't have time. They told us, we ask, and the mother said, too many, the work is too heavy, no time to be depressed. And another mother say doing kangaroo is to jam from to be, uh, to be preoccupied, to be occupied, yeah, by her infant. And uh, really it's interesting, we publish, <laughs> we publish a paper in pediatric uh, pulmonology on, uh, uh, we are managing early, early discharge, so we discharge with oxygen, less than half a liter. And you can see when we do the winning, yeah, up to eight kilo because we have some bronchopulmonary disease, but uh, uh, more severe. But you can see how it's going. And the, the, the family, if you ask them, do you prefer to stay to the hospital, they will say no. We prefer to be at home. Education and training are the cornerstone of kangaroo. You can see it's 10 years ago. But anyway, there are poor people, you know. The map of the poverty is the same map of prematurity in the world uh, and low birth weight, prematurity and low birth weight. So uh, a lot of people uh, are doing kangaroo. We received nearly 80 teams in 25 years from other countries, more than 40. Yes, you can see the follow-up in other countries. 
So the conclusion is there is no need to be afraid to put a mother, uh, to put a baby in kangaroo care. I mean, you must be afraid if a mother refused to carry a baby in kangaroo care. Yes, you must open the unit 24 hours. It's open here 24 hours. Yeah, because the idea is parents are not a visit. Yeah, parents are parents. So they must be there with their sick and small babies. And you must give them the, to the tools to stay. And the staff must be trained. And early discharge is a very interesting uh, component of kangaroo care. So evidence, evidence, you have evidence on all this part. And with randomized control trial, I cannot speak about that, but uh, because there is a lot on thermoregulation, physiological stability, stress and pain, breastfeeding, morbidity, mortality, mother infant bonding, and somatic growth. You have a systematic review, you have meta analysis. We are part of this analysis, but a lot, uh, I mean, there is a lot of papers and a good study. On the neurological side, so you have evidence and good study on the impact of kangaroo mother care on the organization of the behavior of the newborn, sleepwalk cycle, sleep quality with more deep sleep, the uh, support for neurological and psychomotor development of psychomotor and neuromotor function and brain structure grow. I am going to show you the result we had in a transversal study that we developed. But first, before the big study, we did a pilot study at 15 years. 15 years with TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. We wanted to see how was the motor function and the myelinization uh, and we did it in a sample of 50 uh, young adolescents, part of the original randomized control trial. And we were able to show that it, the, the kangaroo group had a transmission, transcaiosal transmission between the two hemispheres in a quicker way than the one who didn't receive kangaroo. But so what can we do with that? Nothing. So we decided to find funds to try to renewal our original cohort. So we published this study and our question was, we were able in our randomized control trial to have benefits at one year, but these benefits disappeared or persist. They were interesting, but what happened at long term? So we found a call for proposal in internet from Grand Challenge Canada, and we win it with 10 other institutions on other topic. We win it and we begin a big adventure of to recuperate between uh, at 18 years really uh, the court we randomize uh, uh, in 94, between 94 and 96 in Colombia. We were able to recuperate 70% after 18 years. I will not tell you how, but I will tell you that it was a big adventure to do that in a country like Colombia. And we were, we did, originally we randomized by block of weight. So what is interesting, it was very good for us because we recuperated 70% of our population and we choose all the infant less than 1.8 to do all the neuroimage part. It was not possible to do to all of them for the cost, but anyway, um, so we recuperated 441 infant, 39, um, 39 refused to participate. Very funny, in this 39, uh, it was nearly all twins. I, I don't know why, because I think they support one with the other. I don't know, but it was interesting. We began to publish results of this study, and we, are, we will continue because uh, 
time. We don't have time and uh, it's difficult to do that. Uh, but we are doing it and we have data for at least 10 years of analysis, I believe, at least for me. So mortality, yes, we, we showed that uh, mortality, kangaroo is protecting against mortality up to 20 years. We did have the same effect. And for infant less than 1.8, the old ratio was 0 0.42. Remember that it was in 94, no? And the study, uh, we begin it in, 2000, uh, in 2012. Support of the father. We didn't look for that, but we found it. What we found, we published that when the father carried the baby in kangaroo position, after during the year, he was more present, buying toys more in relation with the development of his infant. And at 20 years, what we found is in this family, the less separation. But uh, it was significant, but for us, it was... Uh, let's say interesting. We look at social behavior and we look it with the education of the mother. They are lowest in the group of the lowest uh, uh, education. We did have less hyperactivity, less aggressivity, less antisocial conduct and less externalization. All these are sequels of prematurity. When you are looking in the papers they are just sequel of prematurity, but you can move that, you can change that. That's the interesting aspect. And we look to, um, to what happened, the academic and professional uh, history of these young people. And we found that the mother put them before in preschool. We found that we did have less dropout from the school. The same uh, years of study, but half of them were working and they were a uh, higher salary in the kangaroo group. I don't know why, don't ask me, but we did a study at 25 years now and uh, we are going to analyze them. We look at the IQ with repeated measure at six, 12 months and 20 years. And we were protecting the same subsample of the most fragile infant. And we look at the environment too of the family, family environment, and we did have the same result that we did have at 12 months. Then we look at something uh, is very important for me. It's IQ less or more than 90 at 20 years. 18, 20 years. And we found that one of the important, really important factor was the grow during the first year of life. Yes, the grow in weight, in height, and head circumference. And the head circumference at the end of the first year, yes, was very significant to say that the baby will have more or less than 19 IQ. We look at the home, the environment of the house at one year and the impact uh, on IQ. And it was the same effect, that a, a very significant effect to have a IQ more or less than 90. Then you have all this neuroimage part. So we were able to do transcranial magnetic stimulation to all of them but only less than 1.8 grams. In this sample, we did uh, magnetic, uh, anatomical magnetic resonance, functional resonance, and tractography. So we didn't finish uh, to analyze that. We are doing it step by step. So it's a thesis of neuroscience in the National University. Uh, it's a young psychologist who did it with an uh, epidemiologist from the National University. And they were able to find that kangaroo had a positive impact in the interhemispheric communication between the two motor, uh, primary motor cortex. That's interesting. There is no paper because uh, she gets pregnant 
and <laughs> I'm waiting for her to, uh, <laughs> yes, but it's like this. We look at the gray matter volume. We all know that premature infants have less gray matter volume. Uh, they are uh, a querpocaiosum, not well organized, white matter, not well organized. And for us, it's normal, it was premature. So let's look at the plasticity. But that's not the perfect way to think. Look at that. We were able to show that in the kangaroo group, we did have more gray matter. Yes, uh, total cortex volume and total gray matter volume of the brain. And, and, so I will show you five little models that we did. We were looking at volumes of different structure in the brain. So this one, I don't know if it's working the, okay, so I know that probably you are used, this little thing in the middle is zero. What is on the right mean, positive effect. What is on the left, it's negative. And uh, it mustn't touch if it's significant. Let's explain like this. <laughs> yes. So what mean that? That when you have, we each time we put the intervention with the duration of kangaroo down, then you have a severity index which include 22 variable before randomization to control the severity of the um, neonatal illness, yes? And up you have the WASI. The WASI is a test to measure IQ. It's a Welsh abbreviated scale so index. So it gives you an idea of the IQ. And you can see that when you have more IQ, it go with more volume of subcortical gray matter. When you, the baby is less severe, uh, the severity index is uh, uh, more, uh, more little, if, uh, so you will have more volume. And when you have more kangaroo, you will have more volume too. So we look, and we did a different, mo uh, different model. So we look at the subcortical gray matter with the IQ. We look at the striatum volume, which is uh, um, like three, three nuclei of uh, the subcortical matter, who can be involucrated in uh, motricity. Uh, and uh, we look at them with uh, IQ2, and you can see that we did have the same effect with the duration of kangaroo mother care. Of course, less severe, the, the illness, better volume you have, but more kangaroo, more volume. Yes. And we look at, uh, we apply a test whose name is a Californian Verbal Learning Test for the memory. And you can see that we look at the intrusion, intrusion, less intrusion, better, a better memory. Okay, so we looked and you can see that we have the same result. Uh, less intrusion, more kangaroo, less severe, and more volume of the subcortical gray matter. We look at the codec nucleus and the nine hole peck test. It's a simple test, but it gives you information. You, it gives you import information on the coordination, on the fine motor growth, and on uh, the velocity will give you information also on uh, myelinization, or let's say uh, velocity of the motor, uh, motor evaluation you are doing. So with the codet nucleus, we did have the same. When the nine hole peck test has a lower value, that's better. So you have a shorter value, less severe, and more duration of kangaroo. The cerebellum and coordination with the nine hole peck test, the same. We did have an effect with the duration of kangaroo. Look, I'm insisting because kangaroo is not two hours here. I can understand why WHO decided 
in their study to ask for immediate kangaroo and if it's possible to go in intensive care unit and to let this baby in kangaroo as long as possible. Yes, and uh, all results are going in the same way, but, uh, and I am part of the group, of the stage group of WHO, but I'm not responsible of the study of immediate kangaroo mother care, but all, all data are going in the same way. Anisotropy fraction. Fraction of anisotropy gives you an idea of the organization of the white matter this time. And white matter and the velocity of the motor test. And we did have the same result. We published these results. And actually, we are looking to the Cuerpo Cayosum, the FAR, how long are the fiber, and we have the same results. I mean, it's really very interesting what mean that. You know, that means that uh, perhaps we could think that putting this brain in a less stressful environment, I mean, we would be happy to treat this premature who go out too soon and to put him another time in the uterus, but we cannot. So we have to try to find where this immature brain, uh, brain can grow. When you see a premature infant, you, you are going to look at his uh, lung. He has difficulty, respiratory difficulty. You are going to look at his uh, uh, intestinal tract, gut, and saying, Ush, calostro, breast milk. But you don't think in his brain. And his brain is very important because the anxiety of all these families, my infant will have sequel or will not have sequel. So this baby born too soon, his brain is very important and it's totally, enfin, it's totally, it's immature because it, it is born too soon. And even when you don't have hemorrhage, asphyxia, anyway, is immature. So if doing kangaroo can allow us um, to protect this brain, that's very important. Okay. Uh, so the idea to do a, a protective environment without interfering with the health care that this baby needs, uh, we are absolutely agree. And it seems that kangaroo can do that. So let's, I already said that, I want to show you something. I think this study was the first one who was looking at brain volumes and impact of kangaroo. And it's a kangaroo of 20 years ago. I'm sure that actually we could have much best results. So what can we do in practice? You know, people are doing a lot of things. I have video. You can extubate it. You can put CPAP. You can put nasogastric tube, take sample. All these things, you can do it in kangaroo. I'm not saying that he will not have pain. I, I'm not saying that. But he is with his family, and he can recuperate of his pain in a different way that one uh, is uh, in his incubator. So we are responsible. Look at this Peter on smooth brain on the left and that turn. And look on the right. We are responsible of that. Look, it's exactly when this baby is with us. So we are responsible to do something. Yes, the volume of the brain will grow 1.5 and the cortex by four is multiplied. So you have 40,000 synapses connecting per second. Can you imagine how they are going to connect if the baby is alone, if the baby has pain, and if the baby has light? I don't, I don't know, but probably it will be better to try to find uh, uh, a non-stressful environment for... And look, you have vestibular stimulation, tactile stimulation, olfactory stimulation, auditory stimulation, visual stimulation. When you look in neurophysiology textbook, they told you that the brain will grow with neurosensory stimulation. That's a neurosensory stimulation, permanent in kangaroo. So why we have resistance? Look at that. That's uh, one month ago. 
Yes, it's in Vietnam. They decided to do immediate kangaroo mother care. It's 70, postpart 70 hours postpartum, twins of 26 uh, weeks of gestation age. But Vietnamese are very military. I believe that they don't ask the mother if yes or not. You stay here. I need you. I know them. I, I want more than one time. But look at that. That's 10 years ago. It's in Sweden. You know, Swedish people are not taking any risk with their baby. I mean, be reasonable. We all agree on that. So two twins of 26 weeks of gestational age in intensive care unit. Yes, and it's 10 years ago, and you can see the father and the mother uh, carrying with uh, patients their baby because they want the baby to be, be to be uh, better. Ah. It's not moving. I have photos after that I want to show you. You are going to see. Just for you to reflect on it. I mean, actually, kangaroo mother care, 24 hours with couplet care. Rich country are doing it. And kangaroo mother care was created. Yeah. So look, all of this is Uwe Uwald from Uppsala who gave it to me. You know, parent skin, it's a new space of care. And you know, we are doing it and mothers are accepting that perfectly. There is no problem. Look, this father with an intubated baby. And you know, all of us, we, need, we don't have enough people working in the unit with one parent for each baby that you train well. I mean, it's, it's people who can help you. Look, uh, cardiac echography. Look, uh, it's nice with a uh, sibling, yes. And I can be sure that they do one or twins, but one baby usually per family sample on the left. Look at the mother. I mean, yes, it's a change of chip. You have to think that the family is not a visit. The family is uh, the parents. They must be there all the time with their sick and sick. Pero los, los siete. All of us. Y me los mandaron a mi We have a separation and we make a mother suffering and probably a baby suffering. Yeah, when it's possible to do that with a billy blanket only, yeah? It doesn't say, why not thinking in kangaroo has a, a neuroprotective drug? Think that it's a cerebral surfactant, why not? Yes, you have a dose-dependent effect on volume of the brain. You have a long-term impact, yes? And uh, the importance to begin as soon as possible and for as long as possible. Of course, at the beginning, we feel insecure. What will happen with the central line, with the catheter umbilical? You mustn't begin with the 25. Uh, with a, begin with the biggest and go down and go down each time when you have more experience. But you must write a protocol. That's very important. And it's a multidisciplinary uh, uh, work. You cannot do kangaroo, only pediatrician or neonatologist or only nurses, no, and all, only psychologist or therapist, no. It's a work all together to do it, yes? And you must teach the parents, explain to the parents, share this moment for them. Remember that the parents are the ones who are going to stay with this baby all his life or part of his life. And uh, I discovered the role of association uh, of parents, and we are trying to create it one in Colombia. The name will be Allo Prima. <laughs> so I just want to say that we have to reflexionate with all this new data. We have to change the way we are doing it. You have to change your photo of the unit here to put a seat at least, a comfortable seat at, at near each. Uh, of the incubator. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Dr. Sharpak. And if we have questions in the public, or do we have questions in the Zoom? Thank you so much for your presentation, especially uh, putting the emphasis on parents are no visitors, but we have to work with them. So that's family-centered care or family-integrated care. My question to you is, if we on Curacao would like to start the 1st of January to give kangaroo care to all the parents, how do we start? Our head nurse of NICU is in the room. We are apping and we are thinking how are we going to start? First, you must write a protocol. Why is the protocol? The protocol is to look kangaroo care in each dependency, uh, in intensive care unit, delivery room. Why? Because as you have resistance, if you don't write a protocol and something happened, everybody will say it's because you did kangaroo care. So it's very important that everybody is agree with the protocol. The second thing is uh, psychology. Uh, in the teaching hospital, San Ignacio teaching hospital, it was with it was with uh, a psychologist help all the staff because they were so afraid for the parents to be able to stay all the time. And finally, it's not a problem if you tell them now that. Uh, a few years, uh, no, more than 10 years ago, they were shut uh, with visit. They say, you are speaking about what? Yeah, they forget, but I did not forget. Yes, so you can ask a psychologist to help you, to help you to, to, to work with everybody. Then you begin. But the protocol is very important. Yeah, and you must have tools to help the parents to carry 24 hours. Yeah, so the Likra band is very important. I'm sure you can find the textile here in the market. Have a look, I can give you, I'm not doing business, but there is one in Colombia which is exporting good quality Likra band. So I can give you, uh, I can give you the data Yes, but it's very important. You cannot do kangaroo if you don't have a Likra band, and you must think about uh, the best uh, chair. And for the follow-up, you must think about, yeah, I know that you are not a lot, but uh, why think about that when you do early discharge, uh, uh, you, you cannot do early discharge if you don't have a follow-up. Uh, no, that's impossible. Yes, uh, I mean, the teaching hospital is the same place and you have a big kangaroo program receiving from 20 units. They discharge at 1.6 and 32. So you have a big work with breastfeeding. We are agree. And to jump from the tube to direct feeding. Yes, that's very important. The second thing, is to build a follow-up. I say that I can calculate for you how, how will be the, the Congo program, with how many uh, infants you will have. I can calculate that with you to have an idea of this kind of program. But uh, I think the unique important thing is to decide to do it. And the second thing, you are in an island, uh, yes, you have parents living very on the other side, and uh, you perhaps you have to think about the support for them to come if they have to come each day. You can ask them, do you prefer the baby to stay or you go home and you come tomorrow? You are going to be surprised that they say we prefer to go with, yeah, and to come back. I mean, there is a lot of possibility, yeah. And I hope you will do it.
I was saying goodbye to one of our speakers, sorry. <laughs> and now is the time to say goodbye.